Welcome to the mathematical series. Today we are going to learn the mathematical concepts related with percentage, ratio proportion and averages. These topics they form the basis for any competitive exam that you prepare. Hence conquering these topics is a must. So let's try to conquer these topics and try to understand the mathematical concepts related with these topics. Our today's class is divided into four parts. First, we'll learn the concepts related with percentage. Next, ratio proportion. Next, average. And lastly, we'll do a conceptual case list, case list which will comprise all these concepts. Okay? And there are different timestamps that are provided in the video. If you feel like you have mastered already one of the concepts, then you can move on to the next concept according to your needs. So let's start with the first concept. Percentage. So basically percentage means whenever we are comparing any value with respect to 100, we call it as percentage. For example, let's say 5%. That means we are comparing 5 with respect to 100. So whenever we say 5%, it basically means 5 upon 100. So percentage basically means comparing any quantity with respect to 100. Okay. So basically its formula is simple. That is it has a value. That is the value that is being asked. And we need to calculate it on the basis of total value. That is the base value. Like in our example 5%. So 100 was the base value. So this is the base value and let's say this is the compared value or the obtained value that we need to compare with the base value. Let's say for example in an exam of 50 marks you obtained 40 marks then how much in percentage have you obtained. So simply total value that that is the maximum value with which you need to compare is 50 marks and since you have obtained 40 marks so 40 marks is the value that you have obtained and 50 is the total value out of which you have obtained. That is, this is the base value with which you will compare your marks. Okay. So you have obtained 40 out of 50. Then to convert it into percentage, we multiply this with 100. So if you do this, you will get the answer as 80%. Okay, so this is the basic meaning of percentage. That means we are comparing any quantity with respect to 100. Then we call it as percentage. Next, when we are asked to calculate the percentage, then simply we need to firstly determine the total value or we call it the base value. Then we need to write the quantity that we need to compare with the base value. Multiply this with 100 and you will get the percentage. Next, x percent of y is equal to y percent of x. Now this is a very, very important concept. It's very simple, yet its applications are very, are very broad, you can say. Hence, understanding this is very important. Now x percent of y is equal to y percent of x. Now let's try to understand how this is possible. So x percent of y. So x percent basically means x upon 100 that we have learned just now. Okay. So x percent is x upon 100. x percent of y means x percent of y is equal to. It means x percent into y and x percent is x by 100 into y. So basically it becomes x into y upon 100. Now similarly if you do y percent, so y percent is also y upon 100. So this means y percent of x. So y percent of x will be y upon 100 into x. So that will again can be written as xy upon 100. So as you can see that both these values xy upon 100 and here also we get xy upon 100. Hence, we can say that x percent of y will be equal to y percent of x and their value will be xy upon 
100 okay next x percent more than y okay x percent more than y basically means 100 plus x percent of y okay and x percent less than y means 100 minus x percent of y now this is the area where many of the students make mistake so make sure that you have understood this x percent more than something it means 100 plus x percent of that particular quantity and x percent less than y it means 100 minus x percent of that particular quantity this is the area where majority of the students make mistakes while calculating make sure that you have understood this properly okay now let's try to solve some questions based on these concepts first we need to find 88 percent of 37.5 so 88 percent of 37.5 now one of the ways to do that is, is 88 upon 100 into 37.5 now at first when you see this 88 percent of 37.5 it might seem a bit daunting but then we know the concept that x percent of y is equal to y percent of x now here 88 percent of 37.5 it can be written as 37.5 percent of 88 okay because it is the same thing now we know 37.5 is nothing but 3 by 8 into 88. So this becomes 33. So answer can will be B33. Hence, just by knowing this basic concept that x percent of y is y percent of x, we could easily solve this question. Also, it's very important to learn the percentage chart. That is, what are the basic percentages that are being asked in the exams, in all the competitive exams? Accordingly, a percentage chart is prepared. If you don't have that chart, then you can comment in the section below and we'll provide you the link to download those percentage chart. Next question. If A's income is 20% more than that of B's income, if income of A is 120, then find the income of okay here it is given that a's income that is the income of a is 20 percent more than that of b's income in such question we will assume that let b's income be equal to 100 x okay so we'll assume that b's income was 100 x now A's income is 20% more than B. So A's income, it will be 20% more means 100% plus 20% of B's income. So that becomes 120% of B's income that is 100% x so 120 percent of 100 x means 120 upon 100 into 100 x so this becomes 100 and 100 gets cancelled so this becomes 120 x so this is a's income now value of a's income is given to us it is 120 so a's income is nothing but 120 so 120 is equal to 120 x this will imply that x will be equal to 1. Now we needed to find the income of b. So b's income we have assumed was 100x. Value of x is 1. We will substitute that value. So the income of b will become 100 into 1. That will be 100 rupees. So answer will be c. Whenever we are given comparison between the two quantities, try to assume that quantity in multiples of 100 or 100x itself you can also assume it as 10x 1000x we do we do so in order to make our calculations a bit easy otherwise you can assume the b's income as x as well 
and then try to solve the question then also the answer will will be the same but then the the calculations might become complicated hence whenever such questions come we try to assume the quantities in multiples of 10 you can say and perhaps the best strategy is to assume that as 100x okay next question Again, A's income is 20% less than that of B's income. So again, we will assume that let B's income be equal to 100x. So A's income it will be 20% less. So that means 100% minus 20% of B's income so that becomes 80% of B's income is 100x so that will be equal to 80 by 100 into 100x so this will come out to be 80x okay and if income of A is again 120 so a's income is 80x so that means 120 is equal to 80x because a's income is already given to us it is 120 and from this relation we got this value as 80x so from this the value of x will come out to be 3 by 2 so we substitute this value over here so this becomes 100 into 3 by 2 so that becomes 150 so the b so b's income will become will be 150 okay next <clears throat> if a's income is 20 percent more than that of b's income then b's income is how much percent less than a's income now this is a very very important question and this is a very important concept normally at prima facie level when we read this question that a is 20 percent more than b and when asked that how much how much percent is b less than a then our immediate go-to answer is 20 percent which is completely wrong okay now let's try to understand why that would be okay here a's income is 20 percent more than that of b's income so again we'll assume that let b's income be equal to 100x so a is 20 percent more than b so a's income it will be 100 plus 20 percent of b's income which is 100x so that will become 120 percent of 100 x so that will be equal to 120 by 100 into 100 x so this will be equal to 120 x so a's income it will be equal to 120 x while b's income we have assumed it as 100 x now it is asked that B's income is how much percent less than A's income? So whenever such questions come of more or less, whenever it is asked that we need to calculate how much percent more or how much percent less, firstly we find the difference between the two values. The difference between A and B, so that is 120 minus 100. So the difference between A and B, that is A minus B, that is equal to 120x minus 100x. So that will come out to be 20x now the next thing we need to keep in mind is that it is asked that it is how much percent less than a's income okay that means we need to compare with respect to a's income that is our base value will be a's income so in terms of percentage it will be equal to a's income will be the base and in the numerator it is the difference between the two and since we are calculating percentage so we'll multiply by 100 so a minus b is nothing but 20x 
डिवाइड बाय एज इनकम एज इनकम इज 120x इनटू 100 सो दैट विल कम आउट टू बी 1 बाय 6 इनटू 100 दैट विल बी 16.66 परसेंट हेंस ए इज 20 परसेंट मोर देन बी बट बी इज 16.66 परसेंट लेस देन ए सो आंसर विल बी सी this is a very important question, a very important concept that you need to understand from this. Please go through the video once more if you have, if you have any doubts. Okay. Next. If 70% of the students in a school are boys. So let's say total students. We'll assume that total students are 100 x okay out of this 70 percent of the students are boys so boys are 70 percent of total so that would mean 70 percent of 100 x so that will be equal to 70 x now if boys are 70 percent that means girl will be Girls will be 100% minus 70%. So that will be equal to 30%. So 30% of the total. So 30% of total. So that will be equal to 30% of 100x. And that will be equal to 30x. So number of boys are 70x. And number of girls are 30x in the school now here it is given that number of girls is 270 that means the value of 30x is given to us it is 270 so simply we will write 30x equals to 270 so that means x will be equal to 9 now we are asked how many boys are in the school okay so boys are 70 x value of x is 9 so total number of boys will be 70 into 9 so that will be equal to 630 so answer will be a 630 only thing in this question we needed to keep in mind was that 70 percent were boys that meant that 30 percent will be girls that was the only thing we needed to keep in mind in order to solve this particular question next now we are going to learn the magical concepts related with ratio and proportion so ratio is basically when we try to compare two quantities let's say in an exam you got 30 marks and your friend got 40 marks so if we compare the ratio the ratio of marks will be you got 30 marks and your friend got 40 marks so the ratio will be we cancel out the tens we get the ratio as 3 by 4 that means the ratio of marks obtained by you with com as compared with your friend is 3 by 4 okay also one important thing to understand is that a value of a ratio it won't change when we multiply or divide it by a constant number okay let's again take that particular example the ratio is 3 by 4 that doesn't mean that you have obtained 3 marks and your friend has obtained 4 marks okay you had obtained 30 marks and your friend has obtained 40 marks but the ratio is 3 by 4 so 3 by 4 if i multiply according to the statement a ratio should not change when we multiply or divide it by a constant number let's say i multiply this by 100 so i'll have to multiply this also by 100 so it will become 300 by 400 again it will get reduced down to 3 by 4 only hence the value of ratio will not change that is the numerator and denominator will not change even if we multiply any constant number in both numerator and denominator similarly even if we divide let's say we divide 3 by 100 and we divide 4 by 100 so this will basically become 
0.03 and this will become 0.04 again it will be it can be written as 3 by 4 so whether you multiply or you divide any ratio with a constant number the ratio will not change okay next thing the value of a ratio will change it will change when we add or subtract a constant number let's say again in our example let's say it is 3 by 4 now if i am adding any number let's say i add 5 to it and i subtract 2 from it so i'll have to do the similar thing in denominator so i will add 5 into it and subtract 2 from it so this will become 3 plus 5 8 8 minus 2 is 6 this will become 9 9 minus 2 is 7 so our ratio becomes 6 by 7 which is not equal to our original ratio of 3 by 4 hence we can say that the ratio will change when we add or subtract a constant number as it just happened our original ratio was 3 by 4 but when we added 5 and subtracted 2 from this particular ratio we obtained a new ratio of 6 by 7 which was not equal to our original ratio and which is in compliance with our original statement as well okay last proportion four quantities a b c d they are said to be in proportion if a is to b that is a upon b is equal to c upon d or we denote it by this particular expression a is to b is to is to c is to d or we call it a is to b is in proportion with c is to d this basically means that a upon b is equal to c upon d one more important thing to note is that a here is called the first proportion b is called the second proportion c third proportion and d we call it the fourth proportion okay so these are the basic concepts related with ratio and proportion now let's try to solve some questions based on these particular concepts the ratio of two numbers is 9 by 13 if the first number is 81 then find the other number okay let's say we are given the ratio as 9 upon 13 it is the ratio of two numbers out of which the first number is 81 so it is 81 we don't know the next number so let's say it is x and the ratio is 9 by 13 now simply solve this equation and we'll get the value of x so the value of x will come out to be 9 into 13 9 9 is 81 so x will be equal to 9 into 13 so that will be equal to 117 so answer will be c okay next if a is to b is 2 is to 3 and b is to c is 7 is to 9 then we need to find a is to b is to c now here one more important method as far as ratio proportion is considered is called the blank method okay this is a magical concept once you learn this concept calculating doing such questions will become very easy okay so we call it the blank method now here we are given a is to b and we need to find a is to b is to c so we write it that a is to b is to c initially it is given 2 is to 3 so we write it as 2 is to 3 now this is a blank space similarly b is to c is given to us b is to c is 7 is to 9 and this is a blank space over here so in blank method only thing we need to do is fill these blanks so we'll fill this blank with the number adjacent to this blank so that is 3 so we'll fill this with 3 similarly at ad number adjacent to this particular blank is 7 so we'll fill this with 7 and then at last we'll do the magic that is just multiply these two numbers okay so multiply 2 with 7 so we get 14 multiply 3 with 7 we get 21 multiply 3 with 9 you get 27 so our ratio becomes 14 is to 21 is to 27 so answer will be a
So this is called the blank method and it is a very important method as far as facial proportion is considered. Its applications are numerous. Even if it extends to D, let's say A, B, C, D or even E to n number of variables, then also this method is applicable. Simply you find the blanks first, then find the adjacent value to those blanks. Just fill them and then multiply the quantities that are there and that will be your ratio. Next, we need to find the mean proportion of 9 and 16. So mean proportion basically means, let's say A is to B is to is to B is to C. So here this B, this is called the mean proportion. And as we have learned from the proportion concept that if A, B, B, C, they are in proportion, that means A upon B is equal to B upon C. Now we are given the value of A as 9. So 9 upon B is equal to B upon the value of C is 16. So simply solve this, you will get it as B square is equal to 16 into 9. So this will imply b is equal to square root of 16 into 9 that is 144. So square root of 144 equals to 12. So the mean proportion will be 12. Okay. So whenever we are given two quantities and ask mean proportion, we will calculate it like this. Next, we need to find the third proportion of 6 and 12. So again, third proportion basically, like we have solved, A is to B is to, is to B is to C. So this particular variable, that is C, it is called the third proportion. So A upon B, again we'll write it from the proportion concept, A upon B is equal to B upon C. The value of A is 6, value of B is 12. So 6 upon 12 is equal to 12 upon C. So this will imply the value of C is equal to 12 into 12 upon 6. So that becomes 24. So answer will be D 24. So here it is called the, we were asked to calculate the third proportion for 6 and 12. Next, now we need to find the fourth proportion of 7, 21 and 9. So fourth proportion again it is C is to D. So from proportion concept, A upon B is equal to C upon D. Value of A is 7. Value of B is 21. Value of C is 9. And value of D will be D only. So we need to find this value of D. So this will imply the value of D is equal to 9 into 21 by 7. So that will come out to be 27. So answer will be A. 27. So these were the magic, magical concepts related with ratio and proportion. Now next magical concept that we are going to learn is regarding averages. So average is nothing but sum of the given terms divided by total number of terms. Okay. So let's say you want to find the average of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So if you need to find the average of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Simply add all of them and then divide by number of terms. So number of terms are 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 only. So we'll divide it by 5. So add all of them. You will get this as 15 upon 5. So average will be 3. Okay. Similarly, for any number of terms that are given to you, simply add those particular terms, divide by number of terms and you will get the average. So average of these five numbers come out, comes out to be 3. Next important concept to understand is that average of the first n natural numbers is n plus 1 by 2. Why so? Because we know that the sum of first n natural numbers, now n natural numbers, natural numbers means starting from 1, 2, 3, all the way till 
infinity okay so these are our natural numbers now we know that sum of first n natural numbers sum of n that is first n natural numbers is given by n into n plus 1 by 2 okay so this is the sum of first n natural numbers and total number of terms are n number of terms they are n so average will be sum divided by total number of terms so that will be n into n plus 1 upon 2 divided by n so n and n will get cancelled out so the average will be n plus 1 upon 2 okay so in our example we have taken first five natural numbers so here the value of n is 5 in our in our example over here so the value of n is 5 so simply substitute that value 5 plus 1 will become 6 and 6 divided by 2 6 divided by 2 so it will come out to be 3 so average will be 3 that is what we have calculated over here as well okay so average of first n natural number will be n plus 1 by 2 here the important thing to note is that it is for first n natural numbers okay that means starting from 1 if any of the values is missing like if it's not starting from 1 then this formula will not be valid this is a point of question do make a note of it otherwise you will end up making a huge mistake in exams next average of first first and even numbers first and even numbers so first even numbers are 2 4 6 8 10 let's just say so this will go on till infinity so let's just say that we need to find the average of first and even numbers so first and even numbers let's say 2 4 6 8 and 10 we need to find their average so one of the ways is to just add 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 and then divide by 5 okay next is using this formula so the average of first n even numbers will be n plus 1 now here n is number of terms so number of terms are 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay so n is equal to 5 simply put it over here so 5 plus 1 it will be 6 so answer will be 6 okay and even if you want to do it you will calculate this you will get the sum as 30 divided by 5 you will again get the average as 6 only okay so these are the important tricks the magical tricks that are there you just need to substitute the number of terms over here and add one to it you will get the average whenever you want to calculate the average for first and even numbers similarly average of first and odd numbers will be equal to n let's say the odd numbers first and first on odd numbers 1 3 5 7 9 and so on okay let's say we want to calculate their average again one of the ways will be 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 divide by number of terms that is 5 now number of terms we have calculated they are 5 so according to this formula the average will be n which is 5 again if you calculate this this will come out to be 25 upon 5 so that will be again equal to we are getting the same results which we will get but knowing this formula it will help save a lot of time in your exam you don't need to do all this calculation simply knowing this formula will help you find the average within fraction of seconds last average of n consecutive natural numbers n consecutive natural numbers now important point to note is that these consecutive natural numbers doesn't need to start from one like in these two cases or rather these three cases or in all these three cases it was said that average of first n odd numbers first n even numbers and first n natural numbers we can only use these formulas when we have when we are starting with first natural number okay otherwise this formulas will not be valid but in the last case it says average of n consecutive natural numbers okay that means it doesn't need to start from the 
first natural number onwards it can start anywhere from anywhere okay the only catch is that all those natural numbers must be consecutive now consecutive there is a myth associated with consecutive and that is that consecutive numbers basically means that the difference between the two numbers must be one only consecutive doesn't mean that consecutive means let's say for consecutive numbers now one of the ways of writing consecutive numbers is one two three four five that we normally understand that the difference between the two terms that is these two terms will be one this difference between two and three it will be again one similarly for that so we assume that consecutive numbers means the difference must be one but it's not the case okay even if i write it as one three five seven nine these are also called the consecutive numbers or even if i start from 11 onwards and i say 20 29 38 so all these sorry yeah all these these are also consecutive numbers why because the difference between them is 9 this is also 9 and this is also 9 so these are also called the consecutive numbers these are also consecutive these are also consecutive and these are also consecutive numbers okay so if you need to find the average of n consecutive numbers simply you need to write first number add the last number and divide by 2 and you will get the average let's say in this case 1 2 3 4 5 so our first number is 1 last number is 5 add them to divide by 2 so this will become 6 by 2 that will be 3 okay and this is what we are getting over here this is also the same thing that we got over here here and from this formula also we get the same thing so these are very important magical formulas that are there in averages do get hold of him learn the limitations of these formulas these formulas have certain limitations be cautious of that as far as last formula is considered be cautious of the term consecutive consecutive doesn't necessarily means the difference must be one on me the difference can be more than one as well okay then also the numbers are said to be consecutive okay consecutive numbers with a difference of two here we had a difference of two these are consecutive numbers with a difference of nine okay now let's try to solve some questions based on these magical concepts first average of 31 42 53 64 and so on so average basically it means sum of the numbers so that is 31 plus 42 plus 53 plus 64 plus 75 plus 86 plus 97 divide by number of terms so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 divide by 7 so this is the first method by which you can do next method is we know 31 and 42 so the difference is 11 42 and 53 again the difference is 11 similarly 53 and 64 it is again 11 64 75 11 75 86 again 11 86 97 again the difference is 11 so the, hence these are the consecutive numbers and to find the average of consecutive numbers we know the formula which is first term first term is 31 plus the last term that is 97 and divide by 2 now calculating this might take more time will take more time then calculating this hence this is a very important concept very important formula that will help save a lot of time in competitive exams so 31 plus 97 it, it will come out to be 128 by 2 so that will come out to be 64 so answer will be a 64 next average of the numbers is given to us it is 11 we need to find the value of x so we know that average is equal to sum of terms which is 8 plus 10 plus 11 plus 15 plus 16 plus x plus 12 divide by number of terms 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this is 7 and this average is given to us as 11 so 11 is equal to 8 plus 10 18 18 plus 11 29 
so 72 plus x divided by 7 is equal to 11 this will imply that x is equal to 7 into 11 that is 77 minus 72 so that will be equal to 5 so answer will be b okay next average weight of 17 students is 16 kg a new student joins and the average becomes 21 kg we need to find the weight of the new student okay let's say in earlier case that is case 1 average weight of 17 students is 16 kg so average is basically total weight of students total weight of students divided by number of students so number of students are 17 so this value is given to us this average is 16 kg so 16 is equal to total weight upon 17 so total weight will be equal to 17 into 16 so this will be the total weight in first case now in case 2 wherein a new student joins the average becomes 21 kg so this average is now 21 we need to find the weight of the new student so total weight of the students which was there earlier plus the weight of new student divide by total number of students earlier there were 17 but a new student joined so the total number of students will become 17 plus 1 that is 18 okay now total weight is 17 into 16 so just write that value over here so 17 into 16 plus the weight of new student upon 18 is equal to 21 so from this we can calculate the weight of new student new student weight will be equal to 18 into 21 minus 17 into 16 okay so you can take two common from here two will be common this will become 9 into 21 minus 17 into 8 so this will be equal to 2 into 9 into 21 that will be equal to 189 minus 17 8 that is 136 so 189 minus 136 into 2 so that will come out to be 53 into 2 so that will be equal to 106 kg so that will be the weight of new student so the weight of new student will come out to be 106 kg okay so here the only thing that we needed to be cautious of was that when the student is increased and new student joins then total number of students will also increase from 17 to 18 also the change in this particular average is because of the weight of new student now knowing the earlier average we can calculate the total weight of the students and plus the new student because of which the average is increasing so from that we can calculate the weight of new student and it will come out to be 106 kg next the average of 10 numbers is calculated as 15 it was discovered later on that while calculating the average one number namely 36 was wrongly read as 26 we need to find the correct average okay now average of 10 numbers is calculated as 15 so average is given to us as 15 sum of the numbers let's say sum of numbers divide by total number of numbers so total numbers are 10 so this will imply the sum of the numbers calculated earlier it was 15 into 10 so that is equal to 150 okay so average of 10 numbers is calculated as 15 so earlier that is again we can write it as case 1 the average came out to be 15 and total number of numbers were 10 so some of the numbers were 150 
Now later on it was discovered that while calculating the average, one number namely 36, it was wrongly read as 26. So instead of 36, the average was calculated on basis of 26. That means we have reduced the total. So there was a reduction in total. The original case that is case 2, the sum of the numbers it should have been 150 plus 36 minus 26 that is why because earlier 36 it was wrongly read as 26 so instead of writing 36 we wrote by mistake 26 so there was an overall decrease of 10 in the total that is 36 minus 26 was the decrease in the total so we'll add that thing so this will become 160 the numbers total numbers are 10 only so the average will be equal to sum of the numbers that is 160 divided by 10 so that will come out to be 16 so this is the original average which should have been calculated so answer will be b 16 okay next now there are five numbers the average of first four is 26 and average of last four is given to us what will be the difference between first and last number okay now there are five numbers let us assume the five numbers are a1 a2 a3 a4 and a5 so these are the five numbers that we have now average of first four is 26 so 26 is equal to sum of the first four terms a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4. So this will this is the sum of first four. So divide by four. This is equal to 26. So this will imply that a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 equals to 26 into 4. Similarly, it is given that average of last 4 is 25. So 25 is equal to last 4. So last 4 will be these as first 4 were these. So last 4 means A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5. Divide by 4 is 25. So this implies that A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5 is equal to 25 into 4 okay now we are asked what is the difference between first and the last number so we have got first equation and we have got second equation now simply subtract these two equations so subtracting 1 and 2 we get 1 minus 2 so a2 a3 and a4 okay let me write it down so a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 minus a2 plus a3 plus a4 and a5 so it will be minus a2 minus a3 minus a4 minus a5 it will be equal to 26 into 4 minus 25 into 4 okay so a2 a3 a4 they will get cancel out and we are left with first term and the last term the difference between them will be 26 into 4 minus 25 into 4. So we can take 4 common. So this will become 4 into 26 minus 25. So that will be equal to 4. As difference between first term and last term will be equal to 4. So answer will be D. Okay. In term, whenever we encounter any questions related to average, just try to form such kind of equations. And then the question will appear to be very easy. Just by reading the questions, it might seem a bit daunting. But then once you figure it down, once you break it down in terms of these equations, then the questions become quite easy. Okay. Next, we are going to solve a conceptual caselet now. So we'll, we have understood the basic concepts, the mathematical concepts related with percentage, ratio proportion and averages. Now it's time to utilize all those concepts and try to solve this particular caselet. In this case, lead, the data is given regarding the population of three major towns in three years. Okay. So three towns that are given to us are town A, 
Next, we are given information regarding the town B. And lastly, we are given information regarding town C. So there are three towns, A, B, and C. And we are given information for three years. That is first year, first year, second year, and third year. The first thing that we do whenever we encounter such caselets is find the structure of the table. So there are three towns and three years. So we'll, we'll make, we'll arrange the given data in this particular format. Three towns, A, B, and C, and three years, first year, second year, and third year. So that will be the structure of our table. Next. Now it is given in the question that population of town A was 1,60,000 in the first year. Simply we'll write down 1,60,000. Next it is given that it increased 5% and 12.5% in second and third year. So if it is increasing by 5%, okay, so overall it will be 105% for second year. It increased 5%. So it will now be 100 plus 5% of first year. Okay. So that will be equal to 105% of first year population was 1,60,000. So if you calculate this, you will get the answer as 8,000. So that will be 1,68,000. Okay, next. In third year, it increased by 12.5%. Okay, so 12.5%. Again, in third year, it has increased by 12.5%. So it will be 100 plus 12.5% of second year. So that will be equal to 112.5 or 100% in fraction is 1 plus 12.5% in fraction is 1 by 8. This becomes 1 plus 1 by 8 into second year population that we have calculated it is 1,68,000. So 1,68,000. So this becomes 9 by 8 into 1,68,000. The third year population it will be equal to 1 plus 1 by 8, that is 9 by 8 into 1,68,000. That can be written as 21 into 9. This gets cancelled out, so this becomes 21,000. 21,000 into 9 becomes 1,89,000. So the population in the third year will be 1,89,000. Okay. Next. Similarly, for town B, now we are given information with regards to town B. So for the town B, population of town B, it increased by 25% in the second year. Okay. So population of B, it increased by 25% in the second year. And in the second year, it was equal to 150% of the population of town A in the first year. Okay. So population of town B, it increased by 25% in the second year. And in the second year, it was equal to 150% of the population of town A in the first year. So again, we don't know the population of first year. So let us assume for town B that let population in first year be 100 x okay so this will imply population in second year so population in second year it increased by 25 percent that means it becomes 100 plus 25 percent of 100 x so that will be equal to 125 percent of 100x so that will be equal to 125x so this is the population in second year in terms of x 
Now it is given that in the second year it was equal to 150% of the population of town A in first year. Population of town A in first year was 1,60,000. So it was 150% of this population. So this is equal to 150% of 1,60,000. So 150% of 1,60,000 is equal to 125x. So that would mean 150% 150 upon 100 into 1 lakh 60,000 is equal to 125x. So you can cancel these numbers and then 125, 150. So again, this becomes 25, 6, this becomes 25, 5. Za. Again, you can cancel this particular thing. So this becomes 5, 3, za, 3, 2, za, and 0. So value of x will come out to be 1920. So population of first year, it will be equal to 100 into the value of x, which is 1920. This is 1920. So this will be equal to 1,92,000. So population of town B in first year, it will be 1,92,000. And also it is... In the second year, it is 150% of 1,60,000. So we can try to calculate this value as well. So this will basically be 2,40,000. This will be 2,40,000. This is 1,92,000. Okay. Now, after taking the population control measures, town B succeeds in controlling population as growth rate in third year was half of that of the previous year now previous year the growth rate was 25 percent that means the population in the third year will grow by 12.5 percent only so population in the third year will be 12.5 percent more that means 100 plus 12.5 percent of population in second year that is 2 lakh 40 thousand again 100 in fraction it is 1, 100% in fraction is 1 plus 12.5% in fraction is 1 by 8 into 2 lakh 40, <coughs> 2 lakh 40 thousand. So this again becomes 2 lakh 70 thousand. Next information is given with regards to town C. Population of town C was 2,70,000 in the first year. So it is 2,70,000 in the first year. Growth rate for town C was 11.11% and 10% for second and third year respectively. So it is 11.11%. That means 100 plus 11.11% 11 .11 of 2,70,000. So 100% in fraction is 1, 11.11% fraction, 11 in fraction is 1 by 9. So 1 plus 1 by 9 into 2 lakh 70 thousand. So that will come out to be 10 by 9 into this. So that will come out to be 3 lakh. Okay. So knowing this percentages in terms of fraction is a very important tool. Again, I'll reiterate, if you don't have the percentage chart with you, kindly provide your comment or you can write down in the comment section so that we can provide the link if you are not, if you don't have the percentage chart with you already. Next, for third year, the growth rate is 10%. So this will be again 100 plus 10% of the population in second year, that is 3 lakh. So 100 plus 10 percent of this, so 100 percent again, we can simply add 100 percent we all know is 3 lakh and 10 percent is 30,000. So it will, will become 3 lakh and 30,000. So this is the data that we needed to calculate. We needed to calculate the population of the three towns in the given three years. Okay. Now let's try to solve the questions. First question, find the ratio of population of town B in third year 
population of town b in third year it is 270000 with population of town c in first year it is also 270000 so the ratio will be 1 by 1 only so answer will be a next average population of town b for 3 years we need to find the average population of town b that is add these all these three terms and divide by 3 okay so 192 plus 240 plus 270 you just need to add all these terms so this will be nothing but 192 plus 240 plus 270 because we have taken 1000 common in all of them into 1000 divide by 3 so if you add them you will get the value as 240 480 480 plus 30 510 510 702 so that will come out to be 702 into 1000 divide by 3 so that will come out to be 2,34,000 so answer will be a 2,34,000 simply added we added the terms divided by 3 because we needed to find the average for first year second year and third years okay next for town b male to female ratio for the second year was 7 is to 5 we are talking about second year the ratio of male to female was 7 is to 5. We need to find the difference between the number of male and female in that particular year. So let's say male and female. The ratio was 7 by 5. Let us assume that the total males were 7x. So total females will be 5x. Okay. Now we need to find the difference between the number of male and female in that year. So difference between male and female. So male minus female that is equal to 7x minus 5x that is equal to 2x. So we need to basically, basically calculate the value of 2x. Now we know that in town B there are total 2,40,000 was the population which comprised of male and female. Okay. So male plus female that is male plus female is equal to 2,40,000 male plus female that means 7x plus 5x equals to 2,40,000 so that means the value of x will come out to be divided by 12 so this will come out to be 20,000 so we substitute that value over here so 2 into 20,000 so 2 into 20,000 so that will be equal to 40,000 so the answer will be B 40,000 okay now in this one important thing to note is that we knew the total population was 2 like 40,000 we calculate the value of X with respect to that normally what we do is we substitute these values over here we calculate the total male total female and then find the difference when it is actually not required because we know that we need to find the difference which is nothing but 2 times x so you just need to multiply 2 with the value of x and you will get directly the answer hence whenever such question comes try to come up with the answer in terms of the variable and then simply put that value of that variable in that particular equation okay so that will help reduce your time of calculation and you will get to the answers quickly next question we need to refer the data provided in the previous question and find that the number of males are how much percent more or less than the number of females so males were 7x males were 7x and the value of x was 20,000 so 7 into 20,000 so that will come out to be 1,40,000 similarly females females were 5x so 5 into 20,000 so that will come out to be 1 lakh now in the question it is asked that number of males are how much percent more or less than the number of females so we have to compare with number of females so the percentage or required percentage the base value will be females so females are 1 lakh 
okay so females are 1 lakh now we are asked how much percent more or less that means we need to find the difference between the two so 1 lakh 40000 minus 1 lakh so that will be equal to 40000 and since we need to calculate the percent we will multiply by 100 so that will be equal to 40000 by 1 lakh into 100 simply you can calculate this it will come out to be 40 percent so answer will be b okay in such questions focus on what should be the base value this is the area where most of the students make mistake they are either confused as to what to take the base value as make sure that whenever we are asked to compare it what we are asked to compare with will be our base value okay so this will be our base value and it is asked how much percent more or less that means we need to find the difference between the two values and since this value was more than this our answer will be 40 percent more okay although in the option it is not mentioned more or less but even the, you might encounter questions where you are given the options of more and less as well so make sure that you calculate them correctly next question for the first year if 3 8 part of the population of town a and town b and 4 9 part of population of town c are below 20 years then find the population below 20 years in all towns together so we are asked for the first year that means for the first year 3 8 part of population of town a and town b and 4 9 population of town c they are below 20 years so for town a people below 20 years for town a it will be 1 lakh 60 thousand into 3 8 part so 3 by 8 so that will be equal to 60 thousand similarly for town b population of town b in first year is 1 lakh 92 thousand into 3 by 8 so again it will come out to be 8 to the 16 24 24 into 3 72 72,000 and for town C for town C it is 2 lakh 70,000 so it is 2 lakh 70,000 into the ratio is 4 by 9 so that is 4 by 9 so this will come out to be 1 lakh 20,000 we are asked the total population below 20 years in all the towns together that means we just need to add all these values so simply if we add all these values it will come out to be 120 60 180 180 and 72 so it will be 252 this will come out to be 252 so 2 lakh 52000 so answer will be a 2 lakh 52000 okay so that is all that we had from this episode of mathematical series i hope you have understood the magical concepts related to these basic topics which are a must irrespective of, of which competitive exams you prepare for so make sure that you get hold of these basic concepts still if you have any doubt you can connect with me in the faculty contacting us at vidigya till then stay logical with vidigya thank you